welcome on my first step ever a place where you become yourself a little more each day and discover stories of accomplishment of taking first step by people who have been there and done that so today on my first step ever sharing his candid stories and his failures and successes with us is an amazing personality all the way from australia please welcome on my first step ever podcast alan whatmore hi alan Hi, how's it going? I am good and I am super excited to have you on my first step ever because I can see a very very interesting personality through your career journey and I can't wait to discover that what went in making of Alan Watmore and that's all that we discover over here so we can pinpoint that how a person really goes through different life phases and situations and become the person that he is now before i do that i like to introduce you to my viewers our audiences everyone who's watching us and listening us today so alan is the founder of banula which he very generously told me actually means uh, many trees which is i think many branches so it has a very deep meaning uh, in itself this is australia's online marketplace for sustainable goods this is amazing So Alan speaks a lot about plant-based goods and products and venture capital. He's into startup companies, founders and he loves networking, building network across the world and he has done a lot more work in fields in retail and also an institutional advisory network in Australia. So before we get into all these things the big stuff that he is doing let's go back track back to when he was a teenager and he was growing up and let's ask Alan hey Alan how was you as a teenager what was going in your mind at that point in time what was your surrounding like yeah good question uh, and thanks again for having me on the show Ishani I think probably one of the biggest things i found that was um challenging growing up as a teenager was the in school essentially there's a like a very set model in education so you're almost you know in a way taught to take in information you know memorize it recite it regurgitate it to an extent i'm sure there are some institutions now that have this but at the time when i was a teenager there wasn't really much beyond that in the sense of practical application and essentially what career or you know business opportunities that you could pursue from that so that was probably a big challenge for for me i didn't find i found the traditional schooling model challenging you know in some ways and so that was something that was yeah very very different when you get out to the real world and tertiary studies or your first job so that was probably a big thing second thing is probably your your family background so i'm sure there's a lot of people in the audience that can resonate you know i my parents split when i was really young and so quite often you know you're spending time between both sides and so both have a very different way of thinking and um you get to hear both sides and so sometimes it can be a challenge to determine what is the the right thing to do or which is the way that you would pursue because essentially you're um Yeah, you know, your your parents are probably your number one role model, right? So that was a challenge. The third thing was growing up. I um, you know, we lived in a household where we we oftentimes had to move from place to place. You know, we didn't really have the money to to call to have a place to call home essentially. So that was something that was challenging because I think it's just another thing that you really have to think about. You know, like uh, it's almost uh, less things that you have to worry. that could change in future um the more time attention and focus you can apply into the things that you really want to focus on so that was something that's challenging in saying that though like i think there's a lot of people in the audience which have gone through a similar set of circumstances and they could probably say that those circumstances have shaped them into what they are today and that could mean that they have a higher level of resilience or you know they um they may find it easier to deal with challenging circumstances because I went through those and I think that certainly a plays a part um but that was definitely challenging it wasn't easy to say the least so hopefully that answers the question absolutely i think what is so amazing and brilliant over here is how you have summarized the three different challenges if i may take 
kind of rephrase or share my takeaway from your three challenges. I think the first thing when you mentioned that you kept changing places, uh, I think that is a challenge in itself. And from the very young age, you were thrown into the deep end of dealing with uncertainties and dealing with changes every now and then. And that has definitely come across in your career path as well, like how well you are able to connect with people from diverse backgrounds and maybe understand their point of view. Another thing that you mentioned is that you had two sets of values or two sets of perspective while you were growing up, which came from your mother and father. Again, very difficult for a teenager to maybe decide on something or even make their own set of values. So from there, Alan, with your very unconventional teenage days, and you also mentioned that you did not like the way you know education was at that point in time did you ever take any step in your capacity at that age to change things for you or was there a major failure at that point in time in your life be it in profession be it in school academic life or personal life that really changed your thinking in some point in time at that point in time when you were a teenager it's a really good question because back then and I think it, it was probably the earlier days when YouTube and like a lot of um, platforms came up that you could almost self-educate yourself. I was really big into YouTube when it first came out and I would uh, watch a lot of videos on a various number of topics that I just found interesting at the time. So I think that was something that was probably the first step and just having an open mindset into uh, learning things practically. You know, I think a lot of people out there that you you speak to, you know, they, there's different forms of learning that resonate with them. It's whether it be audio or visual or kinesthetic. For me, it was very much visual and kinesthetic, audio as well. But yeah, it was just something in which if you were in an environment where only one of those were being catered for, um, you just wouldn't have the, the, um, the opportunity to be able to really maximize your learnings during that time. So I think... You know, you may have a very specific style of learning that really resonates with you and just being okay with that because effectively that's the same for everyone else. And then not thinking that that you are different or doing anything wrong in any way, but really using that as a way to yeah, understand yourself as an individual and really build on that. So very big on the practical learning. I think as well, just being able to, yeah, really put yourself out there and um, take on any new experiences you feel we're going to really develop you so I just remember left high school or when I was finishing up I thought okay what am I going to do and not knowing and I don't think many people at that time really knew what they were going to do and just being comfortable with that I think there's a lot of pressure to be able to make a decision on what your life is going to look like you know by the time you finish high school um, but I think if you speak to most people if any almost everyone to an extent, you know, people find that they change careers once at least, if not twice or thrice. So effectively it's a journey along the way instead of you making a decision very early on. So I think that's probably a really important factor. Yeah. Some really, really amazing understanding and way of living of life, you know, that makes you feel really stress free, which is that I think one thing that you mentioned was you need to live in the present. I mean, this was an uh, understanding of what you mentioned that you need to live in the present and stop worrying that what consequence of what consequence I will have to face in the future of the decisions that I take right now. And another thing that you mentioned was very, very interesting over here that you were open to different ideas and you were completely okay throwing yourself out there and obviously learning and that is something really good if you can do at the very early on in your life because at that point in time we're anyways dealing with a lot of issues one of being imposter syndrome another being not having enough confidence and always doubting oneself and I think the third one being not being able to express ourselves so while being on YouTube or as you said you like the visual medium and the different mediums and you were ready to you know, throw yourself out there in front of people's eyes. That definitely must have built your confidence. But on the other hand, did it ever bring any sort of negative, you know, feelings towards you? And if it did, how did you deal with that? I think, yes. I think like typically when you, sometimes it can be really hard to uh, put yourself out there or let people around you know that you're you're doing something that may not fit 
the norm or what everyone else is doing because you're you're conscious around how you may fit in and um you know especially you know growing up in school if you didn't if you didn't have a really high friend circle growing up i think yeah yeah i definitely wasn't one of those people who was popular in school or anything like that so i think sometimes that can be really challenging to uh, try something new in the fear of how someone is going to view you and um, how you will be viewed. And so sometimes that can get in the way from you taking a leap of faith or really being open and upfront about what it is. that you. I think that is something that is yeah, unfortunately a negative thing. And I think, yeah, for that reason, education and being able to let people know that that is completely okay. If, if anything, encouraged because, I think, yeah, going back to a point you mentioned earlier about the schooling system, you know, the idea of trying and failing quickly or failing early so that you can learn isn't something that is probably, yeah, talked about a lot because that's not really a framework that applies to assessments or tests. So I think sometimes people may have, you know, it can be easy to be brought up in an environment that if you fail or almost that if you fail, that that affects you for the rest of your life especially once it gets to the uh, like the later years of high school, if that makes sense. So, Yes, it definitely makes sense to me. And I, I, what I, get a, I get a feeling from your story is that you was very sorted from what I can understand from, at your age, where we have a lot of doubts about our, ourselves. But I think you were at least sorted in a way that you knew where to invest your time in and how much how to manage your emotions probably and that's when you said that when you passed high school uh, no one really has an idea what they want to do but it's the matter of just taking a step and moving ahead so for you Alan what was that step like when you just stepped into your career what was it all about uh, how did you plan to take that step forward probably the first first probably job I had working as a a sales rep for an outsourcing company that did the direct sales for an Australian cable TV company, basically. So it was, a, it was much, you know, you would go and knock on doors and get to know them and essentially what cable TV plan they had or phone plan that they had. They had a few contracts and uh, see if you could provide a solution to them. And at the time when I first joined, although it was a job, it was uh, commission only. In other words, no base pay. So you know, you would go out for an entire eight or so hours a day, not knowing if you were going to come or make a single dollar. So that was a really unique experience in the sense that, yeah, essentially any money that you make is purely off the results that you bring in. So I think when I started that job, I did a week's worth of training and then you go out there in the field. And then for probably the first three weeks, I didn't make a single sale. And so I was really on the edge at that point of thinking to myself, is this something that's really for me? And then I think it was, yeah, on Friday of the third week, I uh, I came across a place where I met a really nice guy and I was talking and going through the proposition and he said yes. And at that time, it's almost a shock, you know, really, you know, I, you know I've gotten dozens and dozens and dozens of no's and here you are saying yes. And it was through that, I think it just sparked something. And then before you know it, it led to the second, to the third. And I think a couple of months later, I was fortunate to be, yeah, the the top seller for the state uh, back to back for a couple of weeks. So that was like a really, really unique experience. So that's probably something in terms of a lesson. You know, if there's something that you really like to do and you enjoy doing it, but you may not find success in it, even for the first two, three, four, five weeks or so, um, simply the fact that you enjoy it and you like to do it will eventually, with trial and error and time, get you to a point that you will find yourself successful in doing that, essentially. Um, I think you meet a lot of people these days who are, whether working in roles or pursuing careers in which they truly aren't happy in, to some extent. And yet, those people in themselves, to some degree, you could argue that they are successful in that career or pursuing that path. So I think, to that extent, if you enjoy doing it and you really like spending time with it, um, essentially give it time, continue trying, meeting people, researching asking the right questions and eventually you will get there this is such an incredible story from not being able to crack a sale to be the top salesperson but as you mentioned alan that there was a point when you felt that this is not for you so what kept you going for example had that 
sale did not convert the first sale that converted after a few weeks for example if they did not convert for mu- for few more weeks mm-hmm. do you think you would be going ahead with that and if yes what would make you go ahead yeah it's a good question i think um probably income was one at the time like you needed money for other people Practical in a similar reasons. position it, yeah absolutely for other people in a similar position it could be the fact that you know you've told people about it and you really want to see it through it could be the fact that someone else believes you almost more than you do at the time and they truly believe you can and if someone else can believe in you just from seeing that as a third person you know there, there's something to that so i think there's probably a number of reasons as to why someone would or yeah why i at the time pursued it to the end but all it takes is the one one reason to be fair yeah if you're in a position yeah. where you know there's a part of you where you could do it it may take you a little while longer it may be a little harder than you anticipated or it could be a lot harder but effectively in time you do get there you couldn't be you couldn't be happier that you pursued it yes of course and i think you have a brilliant journey from there from being a sales person top sales person in the very first few months of your first job to now founder of an amazing australia's online marketplace in that span since that time from the very first job experience did you think that made you feel that now you can start your own business where did you get the confidence from my last job that i was working was for a fund management business and in a distribution or a business development role i got a redundant when uh, covid hit and so at that time i thought okay uh, what am i going to do I had a friend at the time who was trying to launch a startup online fintech which was a B2B fintech a business bank and he said to me do you want to come and work with me and help me raise some money I said sure I wasn't doing anything at the time so we worked together for a few months that business ended up falling over just in, for internal reasons the founder didn't pursue it but it was just through that experience that I met a few other people one of which was the founder and the CEO of a US mining company that was in battery storage and he said do you want to work with me at that time probably 60% of his team were PhDs it seemed like a really good opportunity so i pursued that and we worked together for probably 8 or 9 months and it was just through that time that i just came across a lot of other startups in the space and i had an idea to start a marketplace for sustainable products it started out with hemp so yeah the textile industrial side and then from then i found a lot of the people that were interested in that space were very much uh plant based or from a sustainable type background and so we then pivoted the business to focus on a lifestyle as opposed to a single product and that worked really well for us because we could focus around vegan friendly products products that are made from recycled materials products that ship plastic free or contain zero palm oil or zero gmo and a range of values which we now have today but had i not gone through that period of hardship at the same time i may not be in that same position today so i think probably that's another valuable lesson to anyone out there the times the tough times although you may think it's all bad at the time those are the times that really shape you into the person that you then become and um so yeah if anything you're you're grateful for those times in the end so that's a very interesting note that we are moving towards because my next question is around that but before that i'd like to summarize that being a confident teenager to having to deal with different perspective while you were growing up with also challenging and putting yourself out there and dealing with all sorts of different perspective of what people thought about you to you know just going with the flow taking up your first job and now being the founder of an online business space uh, this you have definitely achieved a lot but in this entire journey if you would like to share that one moment of failure in your life which hit you very hard and it took you a lot of time to bounce back from it if you could share that one moment be it personal or, or be it professional and from that moment why do you tell us that story of yours or that incident what was your three top learnings for our audiences today I'm when I was 24 25 I was working in a um uh yeah in a financial services business yeah, a BDM essentially or business development manager my mom got diagnosed with uh, a glioblastoma which is like a a form of brain cancer um 
you know, she'd never she'd never been diagnosed with anything before. And one day she found out, and I think it was from the day that she found got the test result back, within six months she passed away. So that was probably a really tough thing growing up. You know, basically lived with mum and my sister pretty much all our lives, and very very tight knit family. And before you know it, one day she was gone. So that was something that was really really challenging because. I'd never imagined a world of what would look like if she wasn't there. And uh, I'm sure my sister was the exact same. So that was really challenging because, especially in the audience, you know, if you were just looking at things in career, financial, that sort of aspect in isolation, that already has all of its challenges in itself. Um, and let alone uh, any other challenges that you would face in relationships, in your family. So that certainly was really challenging. But I think in saying that, again, that, that becomes a big motivator because you know everything that you're doing, yes, you're doing it to become a, a better person and you know become the very best version of yourself, but you're also doing it because you know deep down you know that you're making someone else proud who may not be there, but you know in some way, shape or form, he's almost yeah looking down on you. So that was something that was a really big uh, challenge, but at the same time um, was something that yeah, I know has helped me shape me into the person that I, I am and I continue to try and improve on. Um, that was that. Uh, in terms of tips for the audience out there, I think, you know, you touch on the fact of, yeah, coming from an unconventional uh, form of education. I think, to be fair, that is uh, becoming a more and more common option for people that really want to improve and grow themselves. I think, you know, the, you know, the days of going through a formal sort of university education I think although have their value, I think there's many other ways that you can get that education without having to pay for it and in a way that you think that is really going to cater to you. YouTube is one. Jeez, there's so many other platforms. Skillshare, LinkedIn Learning, meeting with people, catching up face-to-face or by Zoom or even doing, doing an initiative of what you've done yourself with Shani, like by having a podcast. You know, I, like, I think a lot of people that you speak to typically start off podcasts for the purpose of learning and being able to connect with other people and there's a reason to. So all the credit to yourself for doing that. So probably knowledge is out there if you want to find it um, and in the way you want to find it and generally a lot of it is free. Um, the second thing is, you know, you can do anything out there that you want to do. And I think sometimes, you know, working for in certain environments, you know, it can be very easy for someone to tell you, okay, that's not um, not the path for you or, um, you know, that's no, you don't have the skill sets or you haven't got the, the tertiary education or you're not in the right networks to be successful in that. Um, but again, if you, if you personally like that and you enjoy being in that environment, um, that is the drive in which, is going to take you there as long as you're willing to commit to it, go through the trial, go through the error and understand that things will necessarily take time. Um, But eventually you will get there and you will get there with all the learnings that you'll get along the way. And also as you continue on in that path. So essentially you can do anything that you want to. The third thing is you can, you can really, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, certain individuals or certain people, you know, out there may not necessarily have the time or may not, you know, really want to catch up with you to be able to share their learnings or their career path when very rarely is that actually the case. You know, if you're in a position where you can actually help someone and you know that you're going to make a positive impact on that person's life, you know, time forbidding, if you are able to do that, then absolutely you will find time to do that. And um, a lot of the times you find, you know, people um, where you catch up with someone that you might not catch up with in a week or two weeks, it could take six to 12 months or two years. But when you catch up with that person, you realize that they've always wanted to do it, you know, things permitting, it just hasn't eventuated, but they never said no, they always wanted to in the first place. So you can really talk to anyone um, out there as long as you show true interest in what they're doing and how they can help you and in turn, if you can help them as well. So those are probably the biggest things. Knowledge is out there if you want it. Education doesn't have to be tertiary or paid to be valuable. Um, you can do anything and want to, you can do anything you want to in life so long as you have the time and the motivation and being able to go through trial and error. And the fact that you can also connect with anyone that you want to as well, so long as you have genuine interest and you actually want to make a difference. So.
very very well summarize alan and those those uh, thoughts of yours that i think that really comes from your experience it speaks a lot and i could really identify and relate to all these tips that you have shared with us and i also like to thank you for sharing a very personal moment of your life with us and to let us know that what reality really holds and that we should be ready for every situation situation that comes in our life we might not be at that point in time but that's what life is all about to adapt and to adapt to the change as quick as possible so thank you alan for being on my first step ever and before we say bye to you are you able to leave our listeners with a quote or a saying that you resonate with there's not one that comes to mind specifically but i think for those that are in the audience you know ultimately there there will be things that you read and you come across that you find that resonate with you and you think that is something in which you truly and strongly believing it may not be one specific quote on there, but to really almost use that as a form of motivation so that when you know that things are getting tough or, you know, you're finding challenges and trials throughout the journey, um, that that is something that you can look at and say, okay, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing in the first place. You know, I, I'm going through this hard time, but why didn't I get into it in the first place? Because I know that it's going to make me a better person. I know that I'm going to learn a significant amount. I'm going to connect with people that I've always wanted to connect with. And it's going to help me become the very best myself. So hopefully that answers your question. Amazing. Know your why. That is such a great, great thought to leave our listeners and viewers with. Thank you so much, Alan. I have really enjoyed this chat today and you are, your story and as well your perspective. This is so insightful. It's very different as well. And I like that it's coming all from your personal experiences and that you've shared so many examples that whatever that you have shared today will definitely stay in my mind because I can understand the meaning and the reasons behind it. So thank you so much for being on my first step ever. It was a pleasure speaking to you today. Thanks, Yashani. Thanks again for having me on. I really appreciate it.